And cut. Hello, today we are going to teach you how to draw the perfect trumpet lead pipe. I'm not, that's not an understatement, that's, that's the real, real dang deal right there. So first you start with, what we're using is half inch by 020 wall tube. Part it off into a nine and a half inch length. We use these pretty tits ass tubing gutters. These are pretty cool. Boom. Freaking tube, right? And then you anneal just the tip, mind you, nothing, but nothing else, just the tip from like yay-ish up, and then we're gonna go to the lathe. We used to do this in the draw plate, and sometimes we do if I feel like it. But just today, I figured out the proper way to actually do this on the lathe. You really need a collet system to do this. This is a Jacob's Flex collet, and I really like these things. They're very concentric, and you don't f tubes up. If you do this in a three-drop chuck, it ain't gonna happen, Chief. Ain't gonna happen. So I'm going about 600 RPMs. I soaked it up to get my spinning rest in here. Here's the important part. We're using a piece of wood, and all we're gonna do is a little bit of pressure and then feather it up. Just like that. Get a nice little tip. Just a tip. Just a tip. No more, no less. This one cracked, so it might not draw good. Let me grab a different one. The killer is escaping! Help! Just like that. Pressure and feather it out. That's it. That's all she wrote. Just a tip. Now we will anneal this. Go, 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 go! Speed round. So now we have our freshly annealed blank, and we will walk over to something metal to put it on. You oh, yeah, let's go. On the metal thing and stop poking me with it. It would be ridiculous to use the glove right there. The you gotta use the. Yeah, get the thinner one. That'll help. Hi, Colin. Hi, Colin. Hi, Colin. So our tube is cooled down. We're gonna soap up our mandrel. And you wanna be pretty generous with this, but also you don't want these big clumps of soap. You wanna go just go like that. Generous amount of soap and then wipe it off. And we take our definitely cooled down tube, shove it on there. But first, tumble off. What's that doing, Miles? It's hardening the nose, because if the nose is soft when you start drawing, it's very likely that the mandrel will pull through the nose of the tube. Me and Adam know all about that yes. mandrel pulling through. Yeah, these guys pull out, you know what I'm saying? No, I don't. We have our nylon washer. This is 3 8 thick, one inch nylon, with a 5 16 hole drilled through it. Countersink on one side, just to help it enter the tube. Put that on, and then we get our bolt. You're not gonna use the fancy new bolts we just bought? These bolts are That's not quarter 20. We have one right there. Look at that. New bolts. You know they sell bolts of Menards? Look at them, look at them. This guy's been buying them at McMaster. Ready? Let's go on the other side. Boom. Oh, yeah. That's it's all, all part of the perfect process. Just, Write that in your notes. Just for reference, we just switched back to a bigger size of nylon, so I have to adjust the tooling. For the you sake take of, this bolt out so you don't ruin that? Um, I would have had time. Boom. Show it off to your yawn. I don't think this will work well on camera. I don't think you work well on camera. My head's in the game, but my heart is in the We don't make Woo! money off YouTube. That is what I would call a perfect fret trumpet lead pipe. It's a really small So pressure. because we drew with nylon, the thickness distribution is 100% even throughout this entire pipe. When you draw with steel washers, you'll have a thick end and a thin end to the wall thickness. And this is not that. So if you want to copy one of my lead pipes, it's very easy. You don't have to do any math. You don't have to do any meth? No, none. And then I just go like this. Get rid of, some, get rid of that craggy little bit, and there we go. Perfect trumpet lead pipe. that's ready to install in your Hoobadikio trumpet. yes, this is a Hoobadikio 3 pipe. Is it? I don't know. Up to you. So now we're gonna go through a more involved process, which is making a French horn. Now lead we pipe. do that fake instrument. Now we're doing the French horn lead pipe. This is our raw tube. We've been playing around with some different sizes the last 24 hours since I've de developed this process. <laughs> Starting with half inch tube, and we were actually drawing a ball through the half inch tube to bring up the bore size. And it worked really good, but the ball started getting burrs on it and leaving marks inside the tubes. And then I messed up like, you know, 30 French horn lead pipes doing that. So then I found a 9 16 tube that worked pretty well. This is a 17 30 seconds, which is smack dab in the middle of those two dimensions. So this is hopefully what I'm gonna be able to source for French horn lead pipes. Uh, we'll have to see. Worst case, it would be 9 16 but this is 17 30 seconds, which is 0.5315 and 0201, same kind of deal. So we're gonna anneal the tip. Just the tip. Just the tip. All right, this one I'm gonna try to film better than the last one, so okay. I'm gonna... Just go behind the machine. I can't. <laughs> so same thing as with the trumpet plane. But it's bigger! 
So first, we're gonna check the overall length. What was our length? 21 and three quarters. That's what we're aiming for after the first draw. We're gonna go 20. So what he's not explaining is with French horn lead pipes, we have to draw them twice on two different mandrels. Earlier, we measured the second mandrel length. We wanted 21 and three quarters before we do the second draw. We still haven't figured out the optimal number for the first one, but he thinks it's 20 and a half. So we're gonna do 20 and 500 thousandths. And he's marking it with a drywall saw. Is our new tool. Boom, that's it. That's Boom. all it is. Boom, Boom. No big and deal. we leave that on the floor. <laughs> Oh. Now we anneal the whole tube. Look so how good that nose looks. looks. Get a shot of that nose. It's a freaking professional <laughs> nose. Adam, turn the light. Adam, the light. Adam did his job. Oh, look at that t-shirt. Look at that t-shirt. Look at the t-shirt. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Oh! oh. Poop. This is an idea I've had for a while, and I made this mandrel <laughs> yesterday to do it, and it, it works out really good. Like, you should have seen Ian's face when I showed him the pipe I drew earlier. Pre-draw there. The difference, okay. so on a trumpet lead pipe, we can go from the straight tube to that taper tube in one go, because the difference in diameters between a half-inch pipe and a finished pipe is only about 150 thousandths. Actually less, 120 thousandths. French horn pipe goes, so Venturi on a trumpet is 0.345, typically, approximately. And on a French horn, it's 0.290 the mandrel goes down that that far, much further. So you have to do it in two steps. He's talking about, this is the mandrel, this is the thick end, and this is the thin end. He's talking about the measurement of the thin end. So Colin will just you can a see you can see the difference yeah. between the trumpet this and is, the French horn. This is an 8D mandrel, and it's actually much smaller. It's about 270. So where's the one you're talking about? That's the one. one. That's good. That's good enough. That's, what That's we're good. Doing. There are a couple of ways to get your French horn lead pipes to work, and one way is to do a pre-draw. What I used to do is do two or three steps of different diameters pulling through different dies. That works great, except for when you draw out your finished pipe, like right here, you can see where this step was is a line. And that line transfers on the inside no matter what you do. So that's the drawback to doing what I did. The drawback? A dedicated mandrel just for the preform of a French horn. And we draw that pipe that we just annealed right onto here. It's basically a trumpet lead pipe, but longer. And this fits 50 thousandths oversize on just about all of my French horn mandrels. I can pre-draw a lot of blanks and then put them to the size of a specific mandrel in another drawing it. It works really nice. So we got our two blank annealed and we're gonna do the same thing we do with the trumpet. We're gonna take it. The, it has to be a six and a half AL. If yeah. it's not a six if it's and anything half else, AL, it's wrong. It's useless. Maybe that mouthpiece when you're done with it? Useless, you know. He's very aware of what, what useless is. Look at that. Soap is pretty much the same exact thing as trumpet. Except you don't throw it on the floor. Soap the mandrel just enough. You don't want clumps like he said earlier. Soap the outside. Doesn't matter how much is on the outside because the washer's going to push off the bunch anyway. Make sure the nose is good. Ooh, new bolt. New bolt. That's so we wise. install our clip. We lock and load. Perfect. The one inch nylon makes a huge difference. Yeah, it does. We gotta work on this part though. Yeah. It likes to hold on. Not a perfect process, but it does make a perfect lead pipe. It might does. I add. Hey. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, these are grade eight. If you're ever drawing, make sure you cut off as we're pulling it off the mandrel. But this is our pre drawn French horn lead pipe. So this is sized down just a bit so that we can still fit the finished mandrel inside of this. We will have to re nose this a little bit, anneal it again, and then we can draw it on the final mandrel. So we will come back when we have that. Cleaning the lens break. And the lens is clean. So while I was cleaning the lens, Miles nosed and annealed this tube, which is now miraculously over here and not over there. Ooh, it's still a little warm. We're gonna yeah, leave that for a second. The only thing you can talk about is these washers. So these are Nylon 6.6 that I get from McMaster Car. Thanks to McMaster Car for sponsoring this yes, episode. Yes, thank you McMaster Car for sponsoring this episode and giving me lots of free stuff. By giving us stuff that we have to pay for. Yes. <laughs> this has a .260 hole drilled in it. It's important that the hole on these washers is slightly smaller than the hole, than the small end of your mandrel. Venturi end we were talking yes. about earlier. It's important because that way, if you make it the same size, this material obviously stretches and you lose like a little bit of that tight draw at the beginning. If the material always has a stretch to draw the material, the brass down, then you end up with a pretty good even draw. And you always want it tight. You want it tight. But these are just cut. I'm delayed, no big deal. Uh, I'm gonna clean off this mandrel. I use Scotch-Brite. Probably soap and dope. 
Soap it up, but not too much. Get the clumps. I'm gonna go over the hot tube and grab hot it tube. with the stick. There's a little stick in it. Said stick. Wrong mandrel. Gotta use the right mandrel. Gotta keep the camera on gotta talent. Get, gotta get that on the talent. But Colin's not here. How do I put it on the talent? Yes. Shout out to our editor, Colin. Colin, love you. Colin really did not understand how to make bell patterns, and it's really funny. I can't believe we lost all that footage there, because we filmed for another, Hours. like, an hour after that cut off. Like, we did a lot. We did a lot. I don't think we ever finished how to make a bell pattern, though. M I L K. Nope. Another, another round of drawing. Here we go. Oh, what well, wasn't in? One bite, everyone was wrong. You wanna use this one? Oh, wash it on the floor, get another bowl here. You wanna use this one? Why don't you want to thread? What's going on here is you get better grip on it the lower altitude you have. Yeah, that's why you can't make any instruments the... in Colorado. Boom. Freaking perfect. Freaking right she is. I'm right she is. Well, we'll take a look. After I draw this off, I'll show you something cool. You're gonna, you're gonna like this here. Yeah, it, it. They did what? Let's see. He was. If he watches this video. Oh, he does have time to take the bolt out. I almost forgot it there. Yes. Bro. No, shut up. Go away. Shut up. Go away. Thing. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, oh, baby. This trend, this looks a lot, it's a lot easier to see this. Get, what? You're making a YouTube video. So Come say, on. So this is perfectly smooth. No lines, no nothing, no craziness. Let's go to my calendar. Like we said. Right? I have not done anything with this too. Yeah. No sanding necessary. That's how good the draw is. If you're not getting draws this good, you're doing it wrong. At me. At me. That's what you want. That's surface finish right there. The, the nylon draws so consistently that the wall thickness doesn't change. Some people want change in wall thickness and that's great. So to get a change in wall thickness, you draw with steel washers or brass or anything anything harder that's gonna exert a lot more force on the metal. And the cool thing about this tool two-step process is if you want some stretch in the metal, but you still want it to be exact to the mandrel, because if you draw with steel washers, you are not getting exact to the mandrel. But if you draw with nylon or any plastics, it will because of so much tension. So if you want both a tight draw and a change in thickness, you can do your pre-draw with the steel washer to get that change in thickness. And then you just use your nylon and the final draw to calibrate the tube. And that's pretty tits. That's like best of both worlds. I'm pretty sure Colin will have to send or bleep that word. Why? I don't think we can use that. You've been saying it all night. You got an issue with tits? Pretty tits. That It's pretty cool that you can get both a change in thickness and an accurate draw. Now buy some lead pipes, you <laughs> oh www.omeroomers.com. There's no horn pipes on there right now. Not yet there isn't, but as of the release of this video, they're still not on there. <laughs> Send me an email. This is an AT pipe, by the way. Miles at omeroomers.com. If I know you <coughs> and buy something, you'll get a special present. Up there. You can't show them publicly because of human decency lawsuits <laughs> unhinged individuals libel slander defamation of character all of these things i may be guilty of by We're talking about amber heard now exhibits many of those qualities no way this person is not that hot he's pretty hot <laughs> okay, stop.